Uh-oh. I have the workbench out. You know what that means. New gear! <laughs> News from the booth! Hey there, villagers. Welcome back to the voiceover village. I'm Rick McIver, your village idiot and test pilot today. We're going to look at this brand new microphone. I'm very excited. This is the Neat King B2. It just arrived about an hour ago. I got to get on this and make a video. So here's how today's going to go. We're going to unbox it together. I'm going to take it over to the booth and we're going to test it out and we'll compare it against a couple other similar microphones. Then I'm going to go ahead and give it a listen and do a little review and feedback. So let's get started. First off, let me say I don't own the King B original because even though it got a lot of accolades from a lot of voice actors telling me how great it sounded, it was ugly. Look at that. Neat went ahead and redesigned the King B2 so that it's a little more svelte. It's a little sleeker. It's a little cooler. I want to see. So let's take a look, shall we? <laughs> I had to get this from Amazon because every other place didn't have it yet and they weren't shipping until like early to mid-December. So I ordered from Amazon. I'm opening the box. A, it's not taped together. Usually there's some sort of tape that like seals it up. Not in this case. And if I look on the inside, there's a little tiny rip there. I don't know if you can see it, but the box is ripped right here. The inside box, which leads me to believe someone probably owned this already and tested it and returned it. Okay, so it's packaged really well. I can't get it out. Oh, it feels so good. And it's just that easy. Ah, ooh. Here we go. So what's included? Some lovely instructions to tell you all about the King Bee. Styrofoam. And here she is, packaged inside the box. Heavy. Wow. Anything else underneath? No. Wow, is this heavy. This is by far the heaviest microphone that I now own. Here's the little don't eat me packet. And there it is. It comes already in the shock mount. There are no visible switches or buttons or any pad switches, but this thing is a thousand pounds. It's not a thousand pounds. It's kind of pretty though. It's pretty. There is something a little odd about it though. It smells like nail polish, spray paint. It's strong. <clears throat> I'd be interested to know if you have one of these, if when you unboxed it and could tell that there was some sort of odor to it, leave me a message in the comments and let me know, does yours smell like spray paint? Because, whew, sorry for the plosive, but wow, <clears throat> it's a little strong. Strange. When I see that logo, I think Netscape. That's how old I am. That's what comes inside the box, the microphone, all thousand pounds of it. Let's find out how it performs. To the booth! How many times is it going to take before I learn my lesson? I want to test this, but I can't. And I'll show you why. You're currently listening to my KSM-32. Hang on. And here is the new King B2. You hear that hum? Listen to this. I can't do a test with it. Hang on, I can't stand that hum. Just a second. So now I'm gonna have to return this and buy one from a reputable source. Obviously, Amazon is not the way to go when you order gear. Color me disappointed. Grrr. And we're gonna get a new one, and we're gonna do it right now. Ready? Here we go. And here we are. I have a new King V2, and it arrived. It came out of the box. Still smelled strange. Remember the smell? Still smells funny, but it doesn't hum. Look. 
These two microphones are both large diaphragm condenser microphones around the same price point. This is the M Audio Nova. It came out um, in 2011, I think. It's an older microphone, but I've taken great care of it. It still works really well. Uh, this just came out, large diaphragm condenser microphone. Before we really, really get started, I want to remind you to put your headphones on. Go find some headphones and put them on your earballs because listening through your computer speakers, your phone speakers, uh, through even like monitors sometimes, like regular computer desk speakers, they just don't cut it be able to hear the difference between these two microphones. Again, M-Audio, Nova, about a hundred bucks, a little bit more, not much, depending. King B2, $160, a little bit more, and newer. Go get your headphones so you can hear the difference as I cut back and forth. This microphone, like I said when I opened it out of the box, is heavy. <laughs> it's two and a half pounds, about, when I weighed it with the shock mount on on my little scale. Unfortunately, um, that weight makes this microphone the heaviest microphone I own, heavier than the Shure Super 55 that I have. And that's saying something. So I put it on my new Rode arm. Um, I don't know if you can see this from over here. It's on the new Rode arm, and uh, I adjusted the tension, and it can hold it, but it doesn't like to. See, I'll put it up a little bit. It'll kind of, it should come down a little bit. Well, maybe not. Well, there it goes. It kind of sinks on its own. It'll hold there, just like that, but just barely. So what that means is that you have to be aware that this is a heavy microphone, and based on your mounting system, if you're upgrading from a lighter microphone, you need to make sure that your boom arm or your stand or whatever can handle this. That's number one. Number two, on here, there are no switches, dials. There's no pad switch. Um, same with the M-Audio here. There's no uh, padding. There's no uh, roll-off switch. There's nothing. So it's really just take it out of the box, plug it in, and start talking. So they've upgraded the design. Now it's all just a sleek black, which I find appealing. The other black and white one did stand out for sure, <laughs> but I'm not so sure it was stood out in a good way. Um, they've stayed with the honeycomb design on the front of the microphone for the pop filter, which is removable, but I'm just going to leave it on there. With our plosive test, people don't typically talk straight into a microphone. It's just not good mic technique. So our plosive test is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to cross talk across the microphone. I'll keep it right at, pointed at the corner of my mouth and, and talk this direction like I've been doing. And we'll see. Um, pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. Pizza is perfect with pineapple. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. Now, if I talk right into it, pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. You can hear the plosives. You don't want that. So good mic technique is essential. How about the pattern? So here I am. I'm talking in front of the microphone, right in front of the diaphragm. Don't be fooled that this curvy bit that's not the part you talk into. You part, talk into the flat part. So let's go around the edge. Here's 90% off. Same distance, but I'm 90% off the microphone. And now I'm behind the microphone, pretty much talking right across it like I was the other side. And here I'm back on the front. So now you know the off-axis rejection. It seems, from what I'm hearing right now, it's not a huge fall-off, but it's there. I'll know more when I start to edit. Let's do a bump test. It comes in this shock mount, so I'm expecting the noise test to be good. Plus, it's on the Rode boom arm, which has this fabric, which also muffles things. So if I touch the desk, you don't hear it translate, I don't think. The boom arm, no, and that's the mic itself. And here's the capsule. Boy, that's annoying, isn't it? If you're a gamer, you probably shouldn't be using a condenser microphone anyway. And so if you're typing on your keyboard while you're doing voiceover, I think you're probably doing it wrong. So again, comparing it against the M-Audio Nova and the King B2. So let's raise the stakes a little bit and put it a more expensive microphone to see how it compares. Now we have the King B, and we're going to test it against my KSM32, which is also a large diaphragm condenser microphone. However, this one is priced somewhere in the mid 500s while this is still 160 dollars how do they compare now i want to remind you go put your headphones on because 
listening to these reviews through your phone speakers or your computer speakers even or your laptop speakers, you're just not going to get a sense of the difference between these two. Okay, let me tell you a little bit of a story about Neat Microphones. Neat Microphones was founded by the guys that founded Blue Microphones. So um, I believe their names are Skipper Wise and Martins Salsperins. Salsperins, Salperins, Salsperins. Anyway, Martins and Skipper and Martins. They founded Blue Microphones and uh, they sold that company to Logitech. And I read that they had a conversation and thought, wow, now that we know more about how to design microphones and bring microphone companies to market, we should do it again, but better. So that's what they decided to do. And they founded Neat Microphones. They partnered with Gibson. Gibson said, okay, we'll bring you on. We'll help fund you. We'll help distribute your stuff. And they came out with the King B1, the Worker B, and something like the Bumblebee or something. It was like a pod mic on an arm. It was kind of strange. That was their initial product launch, and that was like back in 2016. So after they formed back up and created Neat Microphones in 2014, in 2016, they released their products through Gibson. The audio quality was quite good. People really were surprised um, because the microphones with the yellow and the black, you've probably seen pictures of them if you're looking at this review. That was everybody's biggest complaint, is that these microphones looked Awful. In 2017, Neat stopped making microphones. They just said, yeah, we're done. We have a whole bunch of stock here. Gibson, you can keep selling them through your pipeline. But when they run out, they run out. So people have bought the King Bee and the Worker Bee, usually used from somebody else. But the prices have stayed pretty low, even though they had stopped making these microphones. The company kind of disappeared. Nobody was really sure what happened to them. It was announced in January of 2021 that a company called Turtle Beach, which makes a lot of gaming accessories, headphones and headsets being their main accessory, had purchased neat microphones and was bringing Skipper and Martins back into the fold and they would be part of the Turtle Beach community, ecosystem, whatever. People were nervous. Rightly so, people were kind of nervous. They said, Turtle Beach, their stuff isn't like high-end great. They kind of make junky, cheap, plasticky things. So there were a lot of people who loved the original King Bee who were kind of nervous about this thing coming out. And I have to tell you, I was a little bit too. Even though I don't own any other King Bee products, any other neat microphones, I had seen and heard a lot of them and people, especially a lot of voice actors who thought, that's a great microphone. It sounds really, really good. It can go up against pretty much any other mic. They compared against mics like the TLM 103 um, and said that it has a similar sound quality to it. I'm going to take this footage back to the booth, edit, listen on my headphones because you have to listen on headphones. If you don't listen on headphones, you're kind of wasting your time. So let's jump to my future self and see what I think. Oh boy, that was a long one. Uh, I have never spent so much time analyzing sounds from a microphone. Uh, Wow. Here are my final thoughts. First, the physicality of this microphone. Because it's so heavy, you really need to be aware of how you're going to mount it and if your mounting system is going to work. It's heavy. It's going to pull stuff down. If you don't have a good stand or a good boom arm, you're going to struggle a little bit. Number two, I talked to a few other friends who have bought the mic and I've watched some other videos of other creators who have the mic and I'm not alone with that grounding issue. That hum that I had on the first mic and I had to return it, that's not exclusively my problem. (laughs) It seems that this might be a manufacturing defect with this microphone. Maybe. It was about half and half, the people I talked to and the videos I watched of other creators, about 50-50. So I would kind of rate this microphone as a little bit risky as to what you're going to get. So again, make sure that you check the return policy for wherever you buy this. Now, as far as sound goes, 
That was a tricky one. I used several different pairs of headphones, listened multiple times, and I got to tell you, this is a good mic. It obviously held up to the Nova, and for the KSM32, pretty much a dead heat. The only thing that I would say is that it is just the tiniest bit dark. Not ribbon mic dark, but there is a heaviness in the bottom end, for lack of a better word. It's a little round, a little too, just a, just a hair, just a hair, tiny bit too dark. And when I say too dark, take that with a grain of salt because that's not for everybody's voice. I think it's really just for mine. I like to have a little bit more air in the high mids, but this has that, but it also has a little bit of a scoop and just a tiny bit of darkness in the bottom end. And for the price, it might be worth the risk. <laughs> well, thanks for watching all the way through. I really appreciate it. I hope it's been helpful. If you want to watch some more videos about microphone reviews, check out that playlist right there. Thanks again. Until next time.